talk to you. How many times have you made the wrong decision today? Just today. <laughs> yeah, I don't the Holy Spirit is in the house. So I want to encourage your hearts to release yourself of that burden of the week. Amen? Yeah. How many had a burden of the week? Oh my gosh, only five. That's, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. So this morning, I just encourage your hearts to release to the Lord this morning because I tell you what, if you release all the baggage that you had, the Lord is going to fill it back up with his spirit because he is in this house. So we, we want to like just take a visual aid, the rain that came in, amen, just say, hey, Lord, my pool is empty, fill me up. So thank you, God, that we can come here and be filled with your spirit. Let's enter and pray.
the Lord is good. This whole week, I've been struggling with who I am. Does anybody else get that? Like the world will test you and tell you you're somebody else. The world had tried to tell me that I'm a bigger person, that I'm always going to expect the worst out of people. But that's not who God made me to be. So the Lord had showed me that I can tread in water. Just to give you a quick, just what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. That the scripture verse about the talents, you know how the one had the one talent. And the other one had like ten talents, and he just multiplied those talents. Some of us just have that one talent and we're hiding. And that, I think, is what the Lord was showing me. That we have all these talents. And the Lord, if you're going to hide those talents, what did he say to that? What did he say to that servant? You wicked servant. Because he did not share that talent with anybody. So I thought, Lord, you've given me, you've given us all these talents. You've got to show us, Father God, how to use them to be the people you have made us to be. Because the world has shown us that it is really hard to do that. So this morning, I want you to really trust in the Lord to show you by His Spirit what is my talent that you want me to focus on to spread to this world so that I don't get this false sense of who I am because the world is telling me who I am. I'm not a bitter person. I'm a person of God. I love people. And the enemy was trying to get me to stop loving people, to stop letting them in. I want you guys to know the Spirit of the Lord is here this morning. You don't have to sin. Tread water with Him. Amen. Know who you are in God. So as we sing.
this morning. I thank you that we can rest in the embrace of the Lord this morning and call upon his name and keep our eyes upon him when the enemy tries to come in and give us that counterfeit. So as a people of God, I encourage you. Say, Jesus, help me. Let's say it as a body. Jesus, help Jesus, me. Jesus, help me. Have a forgiving heart. Okay, this is not like a, a rebuke on Facebook, okay? Because I know a lot of you guys like Facebook. I'm not a big fan, but I just wanted to get that point across. I'm not rebuking Facebook. But but what I do like about Facebook is that there are morsels. There are things that, that show up on there that, that are really cool sometimes. And, and, and I had one of those moments this week where something really, really cool showed up on Facebook. And Melanie shared. My wife is on Facebook a lot, so rebuke on you either but little morsels come up and uh and they're really neat so um i uh we, we read this and uh and it, and it led me to call the the young lady's dad to make sure that i wasn't uh um, infringing on any copyrights or anything like that because i wanted to share it with you guys but all of you folks that uh, know the yerkies eric and nina and their girls grace millie and riley they're very dear to us and special to us and a lot of you folks know them too, so they're very dear and special to you as well. Um, uh, I guess Grace was asked, and I think Grace is seven, um, was asked at school what her dad did. And she said, well, he's worship leader. And uh, so the teacher said, well, what, what does he do? And she's like, well, he worships. Is that, is that cool or what? I mean, is it, I would hope that sometimes, I, mean, I would like to get that description sometime. I like Sam Rowley to say, well, my dad worships, because I think that's like one of the coolest things ever. But uh, she wrote a little excerpt that uh, Nina posted, and uh, um, so I wanted to share this with you. It says, I have two sisters. My dad is a worship pastor. My mom is a singer. I have a big sis and a little sis. My big sis is a very good artist. My little sis is cute. My mom and dad are nice, and we love God. So any of you that know the Yerkes, you probably have a tear in your eye right now. And any of that you don't, that's big. I mean, you know, for a seven-year-old, I mean, she just, you can tell that that's cut and dry with her. She is completely and totally bought in to what they do and uh, the faith in their family. And I wanted to share a scripture with you, and it's in Matthew 10. Um, verse 14, I believe here. But when Jesus saw what was happening, he was very displeased with his disciples. And he said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I assure you, anyone who doesn't have their kind of faith will never get into the kingdom of God. I don't think Jesus was saying that we're supposed to be immature and childish in our faith we're not supposed to know all the great mysteries of the world like kids <clears throat> don't know all the great mysteries of the mysteries of the world but i do think what he was saying is that we need to trust him just like a child trusts a parent and i think that is so so important and when we trust him and realize jesus has already done the work all we have to do is follow through jesus made the choice to suffer the cross and don't don't you know don't don't think otherwise that there wasn't a choice to be made because jesus could have cut and ran 
but he didn't. He loved us so much, just like we love our kids. Any parent knows how much they love their kids. He loved us so much that he suffered the cross and died for us so that we could, so that we could have eternity with him and his dad. That's why we, every week at this time, honor that, that decision and remember that decision that Jesus made so long ago so that we could have eternal life. Please bow and pray with me. Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, and we thank you for our kids because so many times it's through our kids and through their eyes and through their actions and through their words that we are brought closer to you. We thank you for this time. I thank you for this body. I pray that each and every person go into this moment with reverence to you and to honor and glorify you. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Kids have been on my mind this week, so everything was meditation this morning. I was telling the group that prayed this morning that uh, that uh, they're just a big part of, of, of what, what God's been saying to me this week. And, you know, I'm not that guy. I mean, it's cool when confirmations come, you know. And uh, do you guys ever look for confirmations? The Lord's been speaking to you, and then you like to look for a confirmation. It's like, wow, that was cool. But, you know, 
I'm not that guy that like, okay, God, if you're here, turn that light bulb on. I'm not that guy. Um, but it's really cool when you get a confirmation that what you're, you know, what you're, you're, you're talking about and what you're thinking about, there are just too many cool things that happen that, that it, you know it came from God. So that's just, you know, to me, that's, that's amazing. And, and uh, Troy and Braden were a part of that today, and I'm not going to go into that, but it just, it's just so cool uh, when, when that happens. And, and uh, anyway, uh, I was talking to my mom last week, and, and uh, you know, when you have meditations, you go through the course of the week, and maybe you're a little more sensitive because you're looking for, for, for the Lord speaking to you on what you can share. And she was sharing with me that she was talking to one of the ladies on Main Street in Anthony who has a shop and uh, keeps a candy dish and uh, kids come in and to look for that candy dish whether they want anything in the shop or not, right? So last, two Saturdays ago, not this Saturday, but last Saturday, um, a couple of little girls came in, I don't know, seven, eight years old, little girls, you know, out running around Anthony King is this where you can really kind of still do stuff like that. So, uh, and, and Karen could tell that they were looking for the candy dish, and she was out of candy, and she said, girls, um, I'm out of candy. And one of the little girls said, that's too bad, because my friend is staying with her grandpa, and there isn't any food there for him. And it broke my heart when I heard that. And uh, uh, to think that uh, that there's little kids in, in Anthony, Kansas, um, that aren't getting enough to eat, and there's little kids in Great Bend, that, you know what, y'all, that there's any kids in the, in the United States of America that are going hungry breaks my heart. When when you think about that, it's just, I, I don't get it. I'm not one of those guys that ever went hungry as a kid. We didn't have a whole lot, but there was always a meal on the table, and I'm sure there are people out here in this congregation that probably have been hungry before, that maybe there wasn't enough to eat all the time. I was very fortunate. You know, I got hand-me-downs from my brother and things like that, but we, we always had food. And and I guess that's what made me think about what how, how fortunate we are. Um, looking at the spread that I took pictures of, of, of the abundance that we have from, from last week when we fed the kids in the congregation and, and, and all the things we do have. And it's just amazing to me. But, but it my whole thing today is reaching out to say give in abundance give abundantly i've got a scripture it's in isaiah 58 10 it says feed the hungry and help those in trouble then your light will shine out from the darkness and the darkness around you will be bright as day the lord will guide you continue continually watering your life when you are dry and keeping you healthy too you will be like a well-watered garden like an ever-flowing spring you can, you can find scriptures like that all through the old book right here. It's, 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 you don't have to look very far to, to, to find a scripture that says we need to help others. Okay? Um, we are biblically charged. We are morally charged to help others. But if we have Jesus Christ and we have the Holy Spirit residing in us, we shouldn't feel like we have to do it. We should want to. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your son Jesus once again, over and over again. Lord, today is good because you're in it with us. I pray that for each and every person here, that as they give today, they give with love in their heart and they give abundantly. We do it to honor and glorify you. And we pray it in Jesus' name.
Good morning. It's uh, an exciting time, and, and, and it's great to have uh, Chris do uh, meditations before you have to get up and give a message because you know you can be 10 minutes shorter. <laughs> That's okay. I love it when Chris does it. Uh, it's, it's great. Um, for those of you who are visiting, uh, I'm Brian Beaver. I'm not the pastor. Uh, we are currently searching for a pastor, and uh, actually we have a few people down listening to one this, this week, so uh, it's, it's a great time. Um, this week uh, was kind of a struggle. There, there's just things in, in, in life that go on that just make you struggle. And, and I'm just asking you, because the message today is really something that might step on our toes, but I don't want it to step on our toes as much as I want it to be thought-provoking, to make you think about it. Um, so right now I just want to pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, these words that, that come today help me to bring what you want to say. And I ask that you open the people's hearts, open their ears, Help them to hear the message you want them to hear. Lord, just encourage them and strengthen them as we go through these words today. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're going to talk about compartments. How many know what the little seven-day compartment for your pills are? Some people have them. Yeah, I have one for my dog. Or my wife's dog. (laughs) And so each day you're opening up a different compartment. Now I'm going to ask you, when you open that compartment on Sunday, is it different than when you open that compartment on Monday? Your compartment of your heart, is it different when you open it on Sunday than you open it on Monday? Sometimes we do. When you think about uh, Sunday, you think about coming, you worship, and you sing, and, oh, that's right. I was going to sing this message because of the people last week. No, no, I don't want you to leave. (laughs) So, but you open open that compartment on Sunday, and and you know that you're going to be recharged. You're going to come in here, you're going to sing, you're going to listen to some great preaching or, or great meditations, or just be able to touch someone else on Monday you open that compartment and you're thinking I'm going to go to work it's not oh I get to go to work it's got to work. you know it's, it's so funny because every time you, you look at something on Facebook oh it's Monday I'm thinking about Friday it's Monday it's a new day it's a new day to start over it's a new day to spread God's word it's a new day for each one of us to live don't close that compartment and not let God be in it how many compartments do you have in your life how many compartments do you have in your heart you know women may say guys compartmentalize a lot of stuff they put it in there and they close it and they don't let anybody in. You know, that's somewhat true. There's compartments that I don't want people in. But the problem with that is if you don't have anybody in that compartment but just your stuff, how is it helping you and how is it helping others? Compartments are not necessarily good. We need to break down those compartments and be transparent. Because so many times we got a lock on that compartment and we don't want anybody in. Maybe it's bad, maybe it's not. But it's a compartment that we're not allowing God into. In Luke chapter 6, verses 46 uh, through 49, Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And you do not do what I say. I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. 
He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid a foundation on a rock. When the flood came and the torrent struck, the house could not be shaken because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like the man who builds a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the tor torrent st struck the house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. See, when we build, a, build our foundation our, on our own little compartments, those compartments will crumble. And unfortunately, we crumble with those compartments. When we build that foundation, we dig down deep, find that solid rock to build our foundation on. That rock of Christ, that rock of His words, that rock that is unshakable. Uh, in our small groups, we're studying... <clears throat> about Israel and it's talking to, uh, it went into about the this kind of the same passage and the torrential rains that they get up in their mountains which are nothing more than rocks there's nowhere for the water to go so as it rains up here down in the desert it's just perfectly dry but as that water makes its way through all the tributaries and everything and, and down to it all of, a, all of a sudden, you'll hear this roar, and here comes this mucky water just churning over itself, just picking up everything in its, in its way, dragging it down. It, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever seen one, it, but it's, it's just like... Anybody well, remember the blob? <laughs> it's just... It just keeps rolling and just picks up everything in its, in its path. And at least destruction. But what it leaves, sand. But on the edges of the desert, of, of these dry riverbeds, are trees. And the only way that they stand is they're right on the edge, right along the rocks, they sink their roots down into those rocks. So when that rain or that muck comes down that riverbed, they're not torn up. We can keep compartments in our lives. We sometimes get torn up when that flood comes because our roots are not deep. You, you think about you think about things our society accepts. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it what we should be doing? Society dictates what we think is good and bad. And this is what's scary. Um, there was a Jack uh, Sweeney actually put on. Uh, his Facebook page, and, and I read it. It's the deadly deception of sexual atheism in the church. And I and I read that, and it and it's scary because it's. Here's a quote out of it. It says, "In recent studies conducted by ChristianMingles.com, Christians between the ages of 18 and 15, 59 were asked, would you have sex before marriage?'" The response, 63% of single Christians responded with the indication of yes. 63%. And we're not talking about non-Christians. We're talking about Christians. We're talking about our foundation, guys. Where is our foundation? Are we, are we firmly planted in God's word? Or are we just following society? He's a good person. He'll be okay. There is one thing truth 
principle that society says that uh, we're going to live for eternity. The problem is, we're not going to all live in the same place for eternity. I'm thinking that maybe society needs to be thrown out. What do we expect of our society? Do we accept what society says, even if it goes against what God says? Let's think about this for a little bit. How much language does our society accept that we shouldn't accept? Do we talk about others? Society accepts that. Do we have crude talking? Society accepts that. Sex. There's a multitude of things now that have come through that society accepts. Everything from premarital sex to gay and lesbian sex. Guys, it's a slippery slope. used to be they didn't accept premarital sex. Now that was acceptable. Now it's gay and lesbian sex. That's acceptable. And guys, there is a lot more perversion that's going on that society accepts. It's a little dark compartment that nobody likes to open. Open them compartments and let God in. Stop taking the world as being our morals, our evaluation. Get back to God's Word. Read what it says about everything. Read the whole Bible. It's good for you. If you don't want to read that, I challenge each and every one of you to read Ephesians and Timothy this week. Think about how they were living. We also have to think about our attitudes. How good is our attitude? Not always. But you know what? Our way out is always there. Attitudes are something you can change through Christ that strengthens you. And that is a misconception sometimes of, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Yes, you can, but you've got to lean on Him and you've got to get all the junk out of your compartments. I've got a lot of junk in my compartments and I've been really working hard this week to get those things out. I don't want one I don't want a bunch of compartments. I want one compartment. I want God in that compartment. When I get my foundation set, everything else is going to be okay because I know he's going to take care of me as long as I follow him. When you think about why we ex- expect God to take care of us or pray to him when we have struggles. Okay? God, this went wrong. Please help me. God, this went wrong. Please help me. People. He wants all of your life. He doesn't want you to just talk to him when, he, when something's going wrong. How many times do you say, that's a beautiful sunrise, God. Thank you for allowing me to go to work. Thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that's around me. Thank you for these people that are that are testing me and encouraging me and, and lifting me up. It's not about being selfish. Open that compartment. Get away. Throw away that. It's about how we can help others. And I, I just think so many times that how happy are we being on the fringe? Do you know what the definition of fringe is? The definition of fringe is a ornamental 
or, or an or, yeah, an edge ornamental ornament. I knew I was going to have problems saying this today. <laughs> or a border. But the problem is on the fringe, it's just frills. It's just frills. Are you coming to church on Sunday? And that's it? Are you on the fringe? Do you do what God tells you the rest of the week, or is it just a Sunday? I got here, I got here on Sunday morning, I got to church, and, and I, I, I went to Sunday school, I, I went to church, I sang songs, I'm good for another week. Guys, if you're doing that, you're on the fringe. If you're not involved with God's work, whether it be inside or outside the church, you're on the fringe. Do you just want to be known as a border or something frilly on the side? God wants you in here. That goes from teaching Sunday school to doing meditations, to serving, to cutting the grass, whatever it is. He wants you. He don't want you to be on the fringe. Because the fringe is not going to get you anywhere. It's scary to think that people believe that if they come to church on Sunday that their eternity is set. Well guys, it is set. But it's not set where they think it is. We need to continue to get into God's Word and see what He wants for you. Yeah, it's great to have oh, we got this idea, we got this idea. We want everybody to do this. But I want to sit back here and watch. I think that's a great idea. Somebody else do it. I don't want to get involved. I'm too busy. Get off the fringe, guys. Get into the church. Get into God's word. Get into his meanings. He wants you. Luke 6, 43. No good tree bears bad fruit nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by his own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or gather grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. What compartment in your heart have you not given to God? You've got to open your heart. Your heart shows where you're going. God's living in your heart. Open that compartment to him. Don't live on the fringe. First Timothy four, one through eight. Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypoc hip yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not going to go hip hypocrisy and through liars whose con consciences have been seared 
as a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to, re to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe, who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God in prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, brought up in the truths of the faith and of the good teaching, and you, and you have followed. Have nothing to do with the godless, godless myths and the old wise tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physically training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Society is telling us one way. God's telling us the other. Which direction are you going to go? You have to decide. No matter how much you want to help someone around you. They've got to make their own decisions. One of the other misconceptions in the Bible, uh, it's also out of Luke, but what man has done to it, not what... Uh, Why do you look at a speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the speck out of your, your eye when you, still fail, when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Okay, that's not telling us not to judge our brother. That's not telling us to not help them. That's telling us, get your life in order. Build yourself on the rock of Jesus Christ. Then you can help your brother. He's not saying, don't say anything because you got a plank in your eye. He's saying, get that plank out of your eye. Society looks at this verse and they're saying... That tells us not to say anything bad about anybody else. That's not what it's saying, guys. It's saying, get your house in order. Get your heart in order. If you're going to be a Christian, you're to help others. Don't come through those doors and thinking, I ain't just here to fill myself. No, you're here to help others. To strengthen others. To wake them up. To love them. And when you love others, they're going to love you back. Demonstrate Christ. Build your foundation on God. Don't stay out on the fringe. Get involved. Worship team, come on up. I think this week, the most important thing is open your heart up to Jesus. Let him work in your life. Don't stay closed. See what you can do for others. Take the plank out of your eye and help someone. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much today for giving us this great, great place to come and worship and sing and listen to your words, Lord. We just ask that... Uh, you be with us this week. Guide us through a, the deserts that we have in our life, knowing that uh, our roots are planted firm and that you'll show us a way out even when we're tempted. Help us to see that way out and flee through that. Run. Just turn.
turn from the evil and run to you. Just, Lord, we love you so much. Just be with us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. He's our cornerstone. He's our rock that we can build our life on. Brian's right on the money. I was thinking about some scriptures as he was uh, as he was preaching today. And uh, I want to share them with you. It says, And now, just as you've accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to live in obedience to him. Let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him. So you will grow in faith, strong and vigorous in the truth that you were taught. Let your lives overflow with thanksgiving for all that he has done. Don't let anyone lead you astray with empty philosophy and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the evil powers of this world and not from Christ. For in Christ, the fullness of God lives in a human body. And you are complete through your union with Christ. He is the Lord over every ruler and authority in the universe. That's pretty cut and dry. To know Jesus and to have a relationship with Jesus, then we got we, we to gotta get into his word. And that's what the first part of that scripture tells me is that if we're going to let our roots grow down into him, then we got to get into the book. Once we do that, we can have a relationship with him and then whatever else is going on in the world, it doesn't affect us because we have the power to overcome it because Christ has already done the work. He's already done that. You know, there's some of the parables in the Bible that confuse the Dickens out of me. I can say Dickens because I'm from South Central Kansas, and it's okay because that's a word there. But uh, it, it is confusing, but Jesus uh, has a way of, of putting it all together and making it very, very simple. In Romans 6.23, it says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift from God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's, that's why we end our service every Sunday with this time, with this time of invitation. If you are knowing Jesus, if you are in his word and you haven't made that decision to accept him up to this point, this is the time for you to come forward and do that very thing. It's also a time to come forward for prayer or if you want to make this your church home. Please pray with me. Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. I pray that each and every person in this room, if they haven't made this decision, that they, uh, that they do that now, that they come forward. We do it to honor and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and join us with this song.
out to you.